Hey guys, in this video we're going to be setting up a KVM hypervisor with bridged networking on Ubuntu Server 2204. Alright, so we're going to start out by grepping out these values from PROC CPU info. And here we can see um, 16 inst instances of that string. So we can see that uh, we have virtualization enabled. And uh, yeah, it has to be, um, it's a hardware feature that has to be enabled. So um, this is one way you can uh, verify that it's enabled. You, you can just run lscpu or, or grep out, grep it in proc cpu info. Um, and these are, you know, the CPU, co CPU cores we have that we're going to be using. Doesn't show in this last command here whether or not we have support, but it's, it's just, you know, something to show you. Now you can also run the kvm ok command, which is not installed yet. So we're going to go ahead and install that right here. So we can run apt update first just to uh, you know update our repo and then we are going to install the tool. So apt install CPU checker and install that there and now we're going to run it again and it's going to tell us that it's okay. And there we go. Um, dev KVM exists, KVM acceleration can be used. So our OS supports it. Oh and here is a, a quick clip I'm showing you how I enabled it. I, I did this before running those previous commands, but th this is a, a clip of uh, how I actually enabled the virtualization features in the BIOS. So there we go. Now we're going to cut back to our terminal after we save those changes. So uh, yeah, I, I did all of that before I ran the previous commands. Now, now we're going to actually install all the important um, components we need for KVM. So we need bridge utils for bridge networking, CPU checker we already have on there. We need libvirt clients, libvirt daemon, vert manager, vert install, QMU, and QMU KVM. Now QMU, KVM doesn't do everything, so you still need QMU. Um, QMU provides a lot of features you, you need to actually create virtual machines and stuff. So you, you basically you need both of those. Now here we are going to uh, we're going to just check the status of libvirt d. So um, yeah, and you see here it's enabled and running. Now um, there are three main components we're going to be running. So libvirt and we, we have libvirt, qmu, and kvm. Those are the three core components for our our system. And libvirt basically gives you access to QMU and KVM and manages everything and gives us a, a standardized API. So here we're going to enable it. And even though it's already enabled, we're going to enable it and start it. Both of those have no effect because it's already enabled and started, but that, that's how you would do it if it weren't. Now we are going to run user mod AG libvirt for the current user. So we're adding the current user to the libvirt group and the KVM group, which allows us to run a lot of the commands that we're going to need to run. So uh, yeah, a lot of the commands would otherwise require root privileges. So any case, moving right along here, we're going to check inside var lib libvirt. And inside here, we have an images directory. You're going to need root privileges to view this unless you change the permissions on it. So um, here I am. There, there we go. So nothing in there yet, but that's where your virtual machine images are going to be placed, where the hard drive images for your virtual machines will be. Now I'm also creating an ISOs directory. Now um, I saw another person do that and he recommends doing it. He likes doing it that way and I thought it's a terrific idea so I'm doing it. But a lot of people would view that as being wrong, like you shouldn't put them there. Anyways, you can run wget to pull down some ISOs to that directory. And we are now going to run vert install to install we're going to be installing, but we're not going to use that ISO that I just pulled down yet. We're going to use that. So you see here, we are specifying location as a web URL. So we're doing that because um, we, we would have preferred to just point to the CD, but um, we're specifying extra args and we're specifying console equals TTYS0 to get the console working for the installation. And for that to work, we can't, um, we can't boot off of a, a CD ISO image. So we have to pull from a remote image. So um, basically because these are kernel parameters that are being passed to the installation and I believe it's that the if you boot off an ISO you're just going to have to deal with the kernel with basically the parameters that the ISO image provides. So in any case 
Um, another way, if we did want to use the CD image, we could just use, uh, we could specify graphics and uh, VNC and install it that way. I do that on another video that I've also published, so you might want to check that one out. But um, in this one, we are disabling graphics and just installing it with the console, which works great if you don't have VNC installed and you don't want to deal with VNC. Um, and you know you see some other standard options here like the name of the VM, the RAM, the disk size, the number of virtual CPUs, and the OS type and the OS variant. Now OS type is actually a deprecated option so we can remove that. I've actually been removing that in the future. So anyways we're gonna launch this and here we go starting our VM creation. Now we're going to just uh, select English. So this is basically the console displaying the installer. So we're going to not detect the keyboard layout. Just select it manually. And now we're going to enter a host name. So basically at this point we're just going through the uh, standard Ubuntu server install, text-based text install. Um, select a default mirror, no proxy. So uh, and, and this is over a console connection. <clears throat> so enter a not so creative username that I'm making up. Um, enter in my standard password. Re-enter it. And just the standard normal stuff. And just going to use the entire disk guided going with the most um, and we're going to leave it at 10 gigs for now. We'll, we'll expand it later in, in cases where we need to expand it. So we'll be able to clone this VM and expand it later as needed. But uh, we're, we're going with the most, the closest to a default plain vanilla install as we can. I just want to get like a, a plain installation that I can build images off of. And I'm not going to... I'm going to have no automatic updates. I'd prefer to just manually choose when I want to schedule those. And I'm going to not install any of this. Um, I think almost none or none of these options. Now, um, let's see, at the bottom here, actually, there are a couple options. Okay, so I'm going to have open SSH and basic Ubuntu server. So those two things, just for the absolute basics that you kind of need for a server, and that's it. And here we are going to install the Grub bootloader because we have to, and obviously we don't have any other operating systems installed here. Now, this whole process has been sped up a lot. Every part where you see it installing components, I've sped that part of the video up by many times, sometimes, you know, eight times faster, sometimes like uh, 20 times faster, but I've sped a lot of these parts up a lot. And uh, yeah, here we go, installing the Grub bootloader. And moving right along here, I did not actually speed this part up, but it was relatively quick anyways. So finishing installation, we're going to hit enter, oh yeah, set system clock. Um, we're going to say yes that it's set to UTC for, for now anyway. And it's going to finish installation, we're going to hit enter, and it's going to reboot. So almost there. And here we go. I'm going to hit continue to finish the installation. And there we go. It's shutting down by itself now. And there we go. We have been, uh, we are still connected with the console, but the VM has actually shut down. So it's not outputting anything right now. <clears throat> so we're, we're going to hit control and uh, right square bracket. Now we're gonna we're just gonna check it here. Verish list, host two is running. Okay, so it looks like it it is we were connected to the console, but it's not outputting to the console. So we can check here and we can find our IP address for this host using DOM IF ADDR. So we're gonna SSH into this. So the console is not working. So we have no VNC and no console connection, which is really unfortunate. It's a good thing that this is working. 
So unless you have an image that has the console enabled on it, you probably want to enable uh, VNC. You're probably better off using VNC to install. But uh, in any case, you can actually add, I'll, I'm going to show you later on how you can add VNC. And this is us being logged. We're SSH'd into the guest virtual machine that we created. And I'll show you later in this video how you, uh, so here we're going to edit Etsy default grub. And I'll show you later in the video how we enable VNC for the VM, for a VM. But uh, here we're going to, these are kernel parameters. And we are going to just add some parameters here that tell that basically tell the kernel which which console uh, which tty to uh, to use for console output so console equals tty s0 so um, basically when we created the vm we told it which uh, we passed these parameters to the kernel for the install for for the installer but now that it's installed the installed system is using a different default so we have to go in there and edit that for it to work now this is the type of change that I'll and we run update grub and then we're going to reboot the system and this is the type of change after making it i would uh save the disk the disk image for this vm and use that as an image to create future vms so the console will be working on on future vms but uh here we go so we rebooted it ping it until it's up now we can ssh back in which is not exactly what we wanted to do but first thing I do once it comes up just SSH in just to make sure that it's working and then we're gonna log right back out and uh, yeah, check the uptime exit now we're gonna connect with the console so for SH list all shows it's up and running which we already know so we're gonna run ver SH console host to and here we have our console hit enter and it's gonna actually display some text prompting you to log in and uh, yeah, we're running an older version of Ubuntu because the newer version we weren't, I wasn't able to pull the media down from the web. I had some issues with the repo, but I'm just using this to test out with right now. And I'm gonna build a, a newer one. Um, I've actually already put out a video showing how I built a newer one. But um, any any case, so yeah, this is the version we have, newer VM in another video I already just published. So check that video out. But um, any case, we are going to exit out of here back at the login prompt. And we're going to, you know, control right square bracket to uh, get on out of there and get back to our host machine. Now I'm um, checking the, uh, here we are just, you know, checking, see we have a uh, Ubuntu 2204 on the host machine and Ubuntu 18 on the, uh, on the guest machine. So, Anyways, here we're going to be setting up a bridge network. And what, what that is, is that's, uh, that basically creates a network bridge that allows, um, it allows the VMs to connect directly to the same network that um, the, the host is connected to. So your, your host, your hypervisor will be connected to one network and all of your virtual machines or your, your, your guest VMs are gonna be connected directly to that same network and getting IP addresses from, from that same network. Um, whereas by default, if you don't have a, a bridged network, your VMs are going to be natted and they're going to be, um, you know, you know, they're going to be on an isolated network and you will only be able to reach them from your host, but basically from the host that's running your KVM hypervisor, you'll be able to connect to them from there, but you won't be able to connect to them from the outside. So if you want to connect to them from the outside and actually run services on them and stuff like that, you need to create a bridge network network so uh that's what we're going to do right here all right so to uh, get started here we're just going to run ver sh net list dash dash all and we're going to see we have a default network now we're going to want to get rid of that one and replace it so say ip link and you can see you have ver br0 and vnet7 and then eno1 is our actual physical interface for the this uh, machine so any case, yeah, run brctl show and you can see, um, you know, the bridge name. So, uh, and that has vnet7. And uh, so we're, we're gonna run sudo brctl add br, br0. So that's gonna be our new bridge network. That's our actual bridge. And um, we're, we're going to, uh, so we, we can see here brctl show. We can see both of those networks there. And um, 
Now we're going to remove. So we'll actually first thing we're going to edit. We're, we're going to check this and we're, we're going to edit our NetPlan config file. Now, if you don't like using NetPlan, you can configure your interfaces with through other means, but I'm doing this because it's the standard generic recommended way to manage a network on Ubuntu. If you're using another distro or you just don't like using this, you, you don't have to use this even if you're using Ubuntu. So in any case, we're going to enter in our config info here. So we're going to go right in it, right ahead and paste this config in here. And I believe I forgot to actually run sudo. So uh, yeah, in, anyways, you can see I have a DHCP. See there's BR0 and there's EN1, the actual physical interface. And um, DHCP is off on EN01 EN and it's on on BR0. So we're going to be getting our DHCP from over the bridge network. So that, that's going to have our actual IP. Now, uh, I couldn't save it because I didn't sudo. So I'm going to sudo back in here and paste that info right back in. Now I'll have permission to actually save this. But this is pretty simple. You can actually, there are other options you can do to turn on STP and to provide other custom values to the interface, but I'm leaving those out just for simplicity in this configuration. But there are other, are other options you could configure and you might want to look into. So just be aware of that. Now we are going to configure our, <clears throat> this bridge conf file. So I'm going to go ahead and paste some values in here. Now these will um, update. Um, <clears throat> these will uh, basically tell the kernel. So this is etsy sysctl.dbridge.conf, and these basically tell the kernel not to uh, not to process traffic going over the bridge with IP tables. So now here <clears throat> we we have this udev rules file. And we're going to paste this in here, and this is basically telling us whenever this BR net filter module is installed in the kernel, it's going to run sysctl on that um, that other config file that we just created, that bridge config file with those values that we want passed to the kernel. So we only want them passed to the kernel when that module is active. We don't want them run all the time, otherwise we're going to see warnings or error messages. So that's why we um, we we uh, use this uh, udev um, rules file to launch to uh, basically call um, sysctl and enable the kernel parameters in that bridge conf file. So now we run versh net dash list all. You can see that uh, default network right there. So we run versh net destroy default to destroy that default network. <clears throat> and now we're also going to undefine the network. So we destroy it and then undefine it. Now when we run net list all, we see nothing is there, which is what we want. Now we're going to go ahead and run IP link. We could also run IPL for short, but uh, in any case, you can see we have, um, you know, our interfaces EN01 and VNet7 and BR0. So the other BR device, um, that, that other um, interface was removed, but VNet7 is still there, which I believe is associated with the VM. But uh, in any case, we're going to manually just remove that just to make sure. And you see up here we had verbr0, so that was nvnet7 there. So verbr0 was destroyed when we uh, undefined that interface using versh. So, anyways, I'm going to manually just say I, I'm going to make sure I remember to sudo and ip link delete vnet7. And I probably could have gone in and just edited the config for the VM. I'm actually going to probably end up doing that a little bit later, anyways. But um, yeah, net plan apply. We should have actually run that a little bit earlier. But um, it's probably better to do that after removing those interfaces. But this is going to apply the net plan config that we uh, that we um, we set up just a little bit ago. So um, yeah, we I've actually lost connectivity when I ran net plan apply. It updated the uh, interfaces. And normally that would probably be totally fine and you wouldn't lose connectivity if you don't mess something up. But um, turns out I did mess something up a little bit. Nothing on this host, nothing wrong with the config that I put in there. But um, this uh, this host actually receives a uh, an IP address from DHCP, but it's uh, mapped out to a MAC address. So my uh, DHCP server 
has a mapping between IP addresses and MAC addresses, so they're kind of static. They're always going to be the same. But they are provided by the DHCP server, so that way I don't have to keep going and uh, you know editing the config files for my hosts every time I rebuild the OS. I don't have to re keep setting a static IP address. But in any case, so I'm going to show you what happened. I'm, I'm going to show you how I edit this in just a sec. But yeah, basically what happened was that the uh, <clears throat> we have a new MAC address for that bridge interface and uh, the, the bridge. So here we go. We actually disconnected completely pipe broken. But um, yeah, so that bridged interface was um, has a different MAC address than the actual physical interface. So DHCP is not seeing that as a matched MAC address and it did assign it an IP address but it did not assign it the expected IP address that matches. So the IP address changed. And um, so here we're trying to SSH back in, but we won't be able to. Um, so it doesn't match the DNS name. The IP that it gets won't match the DNS name and it doesn't, uh, it's changed. So obviously I, I lose my connection to the host. So um, yeah, Green Frog would be my laptop I'm on right now. And Neon Slug 1 would be my, uh, host that I'm running at KVM hypervisor on. So <clears throat> if I run host neon slug one, we, we can see here, we're, we're gonna see the expected um, IP address. So that's, that's what it should have, 157 on the end there, that last octet is 157. So uh, here I'm gonna SSH to a different IP address. So I'm going to paste in a different IP. So instead of 157, it's 158. We say yes and connect in and we see we're connected to neon slug. So we can see it has a different IP address. So we're going to exit. And I'm going to run, uh, actually not exit yet, but I'm, I'm just going to check the interface here. You can see uh, 158 is assigned to BR0. That's our new bridged interface, but you see it has this different Mac ending in a 4E, and the physical interface ends in an E1, right? So that well, that physical interface is still there, but it's the bridged interface that gets an IP address now. And the bridge is just connected to that physical interface, but the IP will, uh, so this is my, uh, anyways, this is my, this other terminal I brought over here is my DHCP server. And we're going to scroll on down here to the entry for Neon Slug. And we see that hardware address. What does It matches the uh, physical interface on my KVM machine, but it does not match the bridged interface MAC address right here. So we're going to need to take this MAC address because that's the one we want to get an IP address. And we don't want it to be a randomly assigned one like 158. We want it to be pinned to 157. So I'm going to go ahead here and copy this line, but I'm going to paste in the new MAC address for the bridged interface. And I comment out the old one in case I want to switch back so I don't have to copy and paste it again. And I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to uh, restart my uh, DHCP service. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to edit this command here. Restart. I'm gonna check the status just to make sure. I, I've broken this in the past and um, I, I just like to always check it every time now. So there we go, it's up and running, active and running. Now we see a couple warnings in there, but that's completely fine, we can ignore those. So now we're gonna go ahead and reboot Neon Slug 1 just to make sure everything is fresh and not messed up. So that's the easiest way just to make sure. So sudo reboot, and there we go, connection lost. Now we're just gonna wait a little bit. So we, we can ping it, should be pingable really soon. I actually fast forward this part of the video. So there we go, we, we can ping it, so now we can SSH right back in. So now we can SSH directly to the host name if we want. There we go, it matches, everything is working exactly as it should be.
And now that we're back in the host, we have our, uh, we can check the uptime, just one minute. Uh, we can check our, our interfaces and we can see the expected IP address. The actual IP for our host is assigned to our new bridge network, BR0. So IPA show, um, basically the same command. And we are going to go right ahead and edit this host bridge file. And this is just to hold the configuration that we're then going to apply. So we're defining a network, the host bridge network. So it's the forward mode is bridge and the interface is BR0. So we're going to basically be creating a virtualized network that we can use that is connected to that bridge network. So now we run versh net define and specify that config file we just created, and that will define a new network. So before we do that, we should we should say net list all just to show that nothing's there, and then we can say net define host bridge XML. And that will defi define a new network based on that host bridge config file we created. There we go. New uh, new network defined. Now let's just take a look at it. Or rather, we should start it up first. And we're going to set it to auto start. So when we bounce the system, it's going to come up. This network will always come up. And now we're going to list it out. We can see host bridge is active and it's auto startable and persistent. So host bridge is taking the place of the network that was called default. Now we're going to go ahead and say, check our run verse H DOM in DOM IF ADDR VM1. VM1 doesn't exist. Run it for host two and failed to query address because it's not running. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and just run verse H list all. You can see that it's shut up. <clears throat> it is shut off. So we're going to start it up to say start host two and uh yeah it looks like we got have a little bit of a problem there because um our interface is specifying default as the interface so we created this vm before um setting up our bridge network so um yeah i'm gonna have to go ahead here and edit this vm and change the interface so we we uh can just run ver sh edit and the name of the the host and this will bring up this nice XML file for us automatically. You can see our network is defined here as a, a MAC address. If you leave the MAC address out, it'll generate one for you automatically. Now we, we can just change default to the name of our network. And um, the, I actually edited this um, multiple times. There are multiple different valid ways you can define this. You can define it in an interface and a lot of different ways you can set this up. So I, I tried a few different things out. Um, yes, you, you can edit this and get this to work just fine. Um, basically gonna show you this, this is just one example of how you can do this. So um, if you, there are other ways that, um, you know, depending on what you want, you might, um, you might do it differently. So if you see something different, it is, uh, it may still be just as valid. Now here I'm changing default to host bridge. That's our network. Now, um, I'm probably going to show you multiple uh, other examples of this in other videos of how you can do this differently. But anyways, for now, that's what we're sticking with. So we run for sh start host two, and it now starts up because we fixed the network on this. So um, yeah, that that is uh, now working. Now um, <clears throat> I I actually played around with this for a while trying to get the IP address to show up, but apparently. Um, this is just not something you can easily query when you, uh, so see here I'm running versh dom if addr and I get nothing. So it, it will still come up, but you won't see it on a bridge network. Apparently with bridge networks, you will, uh, it, this command will not be able to query and tell you the interface because it's not the built-in, uh, it's, it's not using the built-in DHCP server that's built into, uh, KVM and QMU and, and, um, libvert. I'm not sure which one of those components actually controls the DHCP component, but um, that 
this is unable to actually query that because it's not being used. It's using an actual external DHCP server. So any case, um, you know, you can run, um, yeah, it, it won't tell you. And I've edited this uh, host. I, I actually played around with this interface for a while, trying a few different settings. And um, before I discovered that you, you're, you're actually not supposed to be able to query that successfully when using a bridge network. So the last thing I wanted to show in this video is how to add VNC to an existing VM. So we have two hosts here, two virtual machines, and we are going to edit them and add VNC. So we're going to virsh edit host three, and we're going to go right on down to the bottom here. And within devices, we're going to place another tag here. So it has to be within the devices tag. We're going to add a graphics tag. Um, so add this graphics section here, just like what you see here. And um, there you go. So uh, check the link in the description if you want to be able to copy and paste something similar to that. I'm going to try to update my documents so you can copy and paste that. But um, yeah, VeraSH shut down, restart it, start it back up, and we should see, uh, we should, we, we're going to connect to it with VNC. So <clears throat> let's see, host is starting back up here. So we're going to go ahead and run VeraSH VNC display host three, and we can see uh, the port that it's running on. Now that's the last part of the port. So you see here when you run netstat, you can see 5,900. So basically the port that it gives you there should be 5,900 plus that value. So if it gave us like a one or a two, it would be like 5,901 or 5,902. Anyways, that, that, that's how that's specified. So uh, we're, we're gonna open up our VNC client here and connect up. So I'm gonna say not now this. And here is basically we have our console through VNC. So host three, we can log right in. And there we go, there's our working connection. We can check our IP address this way if we didn't know the IP for this machine. So for example, you know, 192.168.3.160. And we, we could even, so you know, that, that would help us discover the IP if we can't find it through some other method. And so you could use, uh, you could use VNC to look up your IP address and then uh, SSH to the host if it is up on the network. And if it's not on the network, you could troubleshoot that and get the interface up. So there we are. Now we're also SSH'd into the host. And yep, so yeah, two connections to the same host and that, that's basically what we wanted to show you. You can check the interface from the SSH connect and basically the same thing here. And th this is mostly everything I wanted to cover for today. Um, here you can see, uh, okay, now I've cut away to another clip. This is uh, two, two hosts, two VMs running uh, VNC. So we see two different ports, 5900 and 5901. Both have, so host one and host two, both have uh, VNC connections. And uh, that's how you'd have multiple connections. And that, that's basically everything I wanted to show you for today. So go ahead and hit that like button and you're, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on all the great content we have coming up. We'll also have a lot of great content we've already put out. So you're going to want to go ahead and look at that history of videos that we have and um, make sure you also hit the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube's not going to let you know when we do come out with a new video. And again, you're not, not going to want to miss some of the stuff we have coming up. So yeah, definitely subscribe, hit the bell icon, and more importantly, leave a comment down below. Not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video, they'll see your comments and be that much more informed. Um, if you know something I don't know, leave a comment down below. Any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, we do want to hear it. So leave a comment down below. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.